When I was 11, I was in a film called Stand By Me, yes. about four boys. <laughs> Amazing film. Was that your big break? Of course. Yeah. We shot it over the summer in Eugene, Oregon. First of all, I had never been west. I mean, I grew up in New York City. Like, Central Park was like, like where the wild things are to me, you know? <laughs> I'd be on that rock and I'd be like, I'm in nature! <laughs> and so I go to Oregon and I'm like, what the f is going on around here? <laughs> Look at these trees, Mom! And my grandparents came with me and they were from Jersey and like they were into like my grandfather had a buffet thing so on sets they put out the food and he was like what the f is this it's like a cruise and it was such a great summer but most importantly about the summer um I had been called you can't tell from tonight but back then they called it hyperactive that was like the word <laughs> That was a word I always heard in like parent-teacher conferences. Your son is hyperactive. I heard Ridlin like thrown around a little bit and like, you know, uh, he's, uh, he's, he's disruptive. He speaks without raising his hand. It was just words I had heard my whole life and I knew it was always like ringing in the background and I, I, I just couldn't control it. And all of that behavior when I got to a movie set was not only celebrated, it was encouraged. Wow. And Rob Reiner told me, like, go, like, trust that, keep going. I wanna see that. Uh, like, do more in the scene. Um, that's it, that's what I need. I need you to be that person. And I found it to be the most freeing place um, in my life on, at the age of 11. And I, I, I knew it was something, it was the only place that I felt just like me, you know? Wow. And um, it's, it's funny, I came home then, and m m my parents, uh, my father didn't come, he was working in the city, and my father's really funny, he's an English guy, I love him. Um, he's watching our kids now, thank God, saving on the old babysitter, they're expensive here. <laughs> um, and I don't trust those babysitter apps, sorry. Um, but um, you're about to find out. Um, but, um, it's so funny, my father said to me, I came back from shooting and I was like, oh dad, it was so much fun. Like, it was just so great. We shoot a, a master, like a wide shot and then they go in for coverage, like close-ups and they want you to be more quiet in the close-ups but they want you to play it bigger in the masters and it's, it was just so fun. And my father is English, he's a really funny dude too. He was like, <clears throat> um, you know this movie will never be released, right? <laughs> And I was like, <laughs> I'm not kidding. I was like, what? No, it's coming out, it's a movie. And he was like, my father who worked in advertising, sort of, you know, worked in advertising, did well. Like he had so many friends in advertising who like moved out to LA to make it big and like, I'm sick of copywriting. Like you could take this job and shove it. And then like went out to go write like a script, would always like come, come back, back and he'd be like, oh yeah, so-and-so came back today, you know? Um, and um, he was like, you know, um, these films never get released. They never see the light of day. This, <laughs> this film will never, it will never come out. No one will ever see it. And I remember thinking like, oh, what a bummer. Like, I really would have loved to have seen this, you know? <laughs> and he said, no, but it's actually a really good lesson what he said. He went, don't go to, because I was in public school. I was going into the seventh grade in the New York City public school system, you know? and. He was like, don't go around telling people you're in a movie because when it doesn't come out, people will be like, what happened to that movie? And you're gonna be like, um, they're still in post-production. <laughs> and it will be a lie. It's just never coming out. So enjoy the experience and that was it. And so I literally forgot, I like kind of went, all right, well, that's a bummer, but I had fun and someday I'll get back to a set and all right, back to, what Back to the New York City public school system. So listen, so the next summer, the film comes out. Now they released that film, it was really funny, they released it right around this time. Um, I don't know much about how films are released, some of my bosses will probably know better, but it was a limited release, so only like seven theaters in the country to see how it was gonna do before they went wider. And I saw it at the old theater next to Alexander's. Yeah, New York. 
old school department store, not there anymore, I think it's a Dylan's candy shop now or something, right? <laughs> um, next door to Alexander's and I went with my grandparents who went to the screening. Uh, I mean, who went to the um, shoot? Who, who went to the shoot with me? And there was no like premiere or anything. And we saw the noon matinee, like the first showing of it. And we went in there. The theater was empty, right? Which was a bummer of a sign, you know. <laughs> um, but uh, it was just so amazing to see the film. It was great. It was a lot of fun. And um, we were walking out of the empty theater, and the lady who sold us our tickets went, "Hey, hold on a second. Were you in that movie?" And I said. Um, yeah, my grandfather was like, um, oh, yeah, they had food, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and um, um, the lady said, what? You're, you're crazy. Come on, um, movie stars don't have to pay. And he gave us our, she gave us our money back. And my grandfather couldn't stop telling people that <laughs> they gave us our money back. And, um, and she stopped me before I left. And she went, hey, that was a good movie. And I said, yeah, thanks. We had a lot of fun doing it. And she went, no, I, that's going to be a hit, that movie. Um, I see all these movies, and that's going to that's gonna be a big movie. And um, it, was, uh, it was like a life changing It was like literally like a life-changing moment after that. You know, it was, uh, it was, it was a big time. Oh.